Good morning, church. It's good to see you today. We're glad you're here. If you're visiting with us, there's a little box that you can put a little white visitor's card in by the door. It's our contribution basket. We would appreciate it if you would do that for us today. Is there anybody who needs communion supplies? If so, would you raise your hand and Mr. Welch will bring those to you. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Marshall wanted somebody. Waited till you put it up. What a jerk. Man, that's terrible. Somebody should, Tommy, somebody should have raised him better, you know? I blame his mom. You were at work all the time. I guess that's it. I don't have a whole lot to share with you today. Uh, please do read the bulletin because it's full of updates and information and all that good stuff. So do take a look at that and see what you can do uh, to reach out and show some kindness this week. I hope that you did notice uh, the auditorium got a coat of paint this week. Uh, it is now gray and white and they fixed the holes in the drywall from years of weddings and years of strollers and years of wheelchairs and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, so this week is going to be kind of a break in the project week. Not tons is happening this week. But starting the next Monday on the 17th, the flooring crew will be coming in and they're going to be replacing the floor basically on this entire level. I have some really good news if you didn't know about this. At the end of that project, they're actually replacing the toilets with comfort height toilets so that you'll be able to get up and down. And the church said amen uh, <laughs> to, to everyone over a certain age is really excited. If you don't know to appreciate that, you really will someday. Uh, so those are coming in. But on Sunday the 23rd, because of that flooring work, we will be in the fellowship hall. And since we're going to be in the fellowship hall anyway, uh, we're going to have a combined service, both on October 23rd and on October 30th, both of those two weeks. So our fifth Sunday special contribution is October 30th. Uh, that will be our fellowship meal day. That's also when we'll get ready to set up for our special needs trunk or treat. So that day is extra special, but we've got some cool stuff I'm going to tell you about on the 23rd too as well. I think you're going to enjoy it. Really glad you're here today. Today we're talking about bridging gaps. We're talking about bridging generational gaps. So um, two-thirds of the preachers are going to be way better than you're used to. Uh, Jack Martin and James Hinkle are going to share with us today, and I think you're really going to be blessed. Let's worship together.
Let's bow and pray this morning. Our Father in heaven, you are great, you are holy, you are perfect, you are forever and from ever, and we really can un understand that. We, all we can know is our flesh and what we see and what we feel, and you are so much more than that. We pray, Father, that you will bring your kingdom into each of our hearts, each of our homes, where we work, in our neighborhoods. We pray that you will, that we will give up our hearts and ourselves so that we can live with you, so that we can be the people you want us to be, think your thoughts, do what you want done, say what you want said. Father, thank you so much for everything that we enjoy this very moment, health in our bodies, um, food that we, will, that we ate this morning that we'll eat for lunch, Clo uh, clothes, homes, our families, our loved ones, even this country, Lord. We are so grateful for millions and millions of things that we, that we don't even process. Father, we pray that you, that we will, again, turn over our lives and our hearts and our minds to you, and that you will search us out, and that we will strive to, to be the person that you, the people that you want us to be. Father, we pray your forgiveness of our sins. We pray that we will forgive each other, that we'll forgive ourselves. Pray that you will keep us from temptation and evil, and fill us with love for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen.
I would like for each of us here during this time of communion to begin with closing our eyes and bowing our heads now because what I would like for each of us to do is have our thoughts turn to memories and our memories actually connect to our emotions. You know, in our lifetime, I'm sure all of us, particularly those that are a little more in years, have attended many funerals. If you're like me, when you think of funeral, you think of an occasion of great sadness, a very solemn occasion. Just the very word funeral, what does it, memories does it bring back to you? What emotions does it bring back for you? Well, today, many a times, I I'm really grateful that we hold what are called celebrations of life. And when I think of attendance at a celebration of life at the occasion, I think of a time where the memories of the person that you were there for, you, it brings joy, brings a very happy heart, very pleasing emotions, and the memories of times spent with the person that you're there to celebrate their life. You know, both emotions, for both, whether you call it, think of a funeral or a celebration of life, both emotions are okay. It's the same event, but yet they can, in fact, bring about two different types of emotions. Well, we gather here each week for a time of communion. And if, like me, again, over a number of years, you, right, being raised in the church, you you gather and you have heard different uh, uh, talks at this point in time and services to, to remember the crucifixion. And if your thoughts go to the crucifixion, you very likely are thinking of a time of great sorrow, of the great pain that our Savior Jesus must have suffered as he was being crucified. And that's very, very powerful emotion when you think in terms of the sorrow and the pain of Jesus. But you may also be thinking in terms of the resurrection. And if you, again, if you're like me, when you think in terms of the resurrection, you're thinking in great joy, an emotion that brings you happiness, a sense of victory. Well, whether today or in the past you have thought in terms of the crucifixion of a time of great sorrow or whether you think in terms of this playing its role as part of the resurrection and that time of great joy and, and the victory that comes with uh, that moment. Both are emotions that are okay. So today we have that choice, each of us do, whether we choose to think in terms of great sorrow or to think of the victory and the joy that comes with that. Jesus gave his instructions to his disciples before his crucifixion, and he said, in essence, remember me. So we remember his life. We remember his example. We remember the promise that he gave. So maybe you're feeling sorrow at this moment because you're looking at the crucifixion and you're saying, I'm sorrowful because of the sin that I committed that put him on the cross. Or maybe at this moment, it's bringing you joy because you're thinking of the promise that his blood, the blood that continually cleanses the, our sins away. Both thoughts are good, both very acceptable because both fulfill Jesus' instruction. Remember me. Let us pray. Father, we do pause now to remember your son. We're so grateful for his willingness to go to the cross, for his love for us and for your love for us that he would be raised again and that we could look upon his life and his promise, that hope of eternity with you. As we now partake of the bread that represents his body, we desire to do so honoring 
his life and his sacrifice. We thank you that we can partake of this bread and remember your son, that we would one day through that have a hope and eternity with you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you'd bow with me again. Father, we continue our thanks. Thanks for this cup that represents Christ's blood, but more importantly, the new covenant, the covenant that gives us that hope and assurance of heaven as your children. We're just so thankful that your son was willing to make that avenue possible and that you sent him to do just that. We thank you for the greatest blessing of all, the life of Christ and his resurrection and his hope and promise of eternity with you. We now partake of this cup to remember his shed blood. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I remember one time hearing someone that got up to say a prayer for the contribution. And of course, he was mentioned the same thing I've heard many times, I'm sure you have, separate and apart from communion. But I love what this gentleman said, so I'm going to steal it from him. He said, you know, is it really separate and apart? Y yes and no. And from the no portion, he was suggesting that we do it because of Christ's sacrifice and his love for us, that we take a time to give back uh, what he has uh, blessed us with. And as you know, we have the black box on the back, and I was thinking a moment ago, I thought, you know, when I think of black box, I always think about the uh, box they retrieve when an airplane crashes. Well, that's a moment where a black box is retrieved because of death. This black box is because of life. It's so that we can continue to reach out to our community and bring others to the light, to the life of Jesus Christ. And so if you would bow with me as we give thanks for our ability to give back what we've been blessed with, if you would bow with me. Father, we are indeed in awe of all that you do in our lives. There's so many ways you bless us, but one of the ways is through your financial blessings to us that give us the ability to live our lives, to enjoy this, this world that you've provided for us. But more importantly, so that we have the ability to give back so that we can help further your kingdom to reach out to those in our community and throughout the world to let them know of the love of Jesus Christ. So we're so thankful that we have not only the time an opportunity, but that we have the will to do it. Thank you for placing that in our hearts. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
The reading this morning comes from Proverbs 20, verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength, but the splendor of old men is their gray hair. So which of you people are strength people and which one of you are gray hair people? I mean, if you don't know, that's either a sign that you're really far down one end or really far down the other end. So this October, we've been talking about how to build bridges. Uh, Christ is the ultimate bridge builder, and he reconciles us to God and he reconciles us to each other. And one of the reasons that the church exists is because we are supposed to be his agents of reconciliation. We're supposed to be people who build bridges. But the problem with that, like we talked about last week when he climbed across my monstrosity of a bridge, is we don't know how to do that. And it's a little bit scary. So I thought today we'd try something, okay? So I want Jack and I want James to come up. And we're going we're gonna to visit for a little bit because I don't know if you knew this, but uh, there are two or three years difference between Jack and uh, James's age. Uh, it, two or three? Two or three, yes. two or three? Two or three. No, it's more than decades, isn't it? James, when were you born? When were you born? I was born in 1900 and none of your business. Now, James, you don't ask a lady her age. I was born one year and one day after Pearl Harbor. Who knows when that is? One day. Anyway. So when they said this is a day that will live in infamy, they were talking about your birthday. Yes, they were talking about my birthday. It lives in infamy. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so you've been around a day or two. I've been around a few days, yes. How has the world changed since you were born? Well, the world has changed. I grew up before electricity. I remember getting electricity. I lived way out in the country, so we didn't get it until the last ones in the county. So I remember before electricity. I remember before indoor plumbing. And I remember just barely remember before computers and cell phones and cars. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How old were you when you got your first phone? About sixth grade, probably. So 12? How old were you when you got your first phone? I think about 50. 50. Okay, it's a little bit of difference. All right, keep going. So you didn't, you grew up, you, you got plumbing, you got electricity. We got our water from a well, and I have 10 siblings. Nine of us were born at home, delivered by Dr. Darby. He was our doctor. He came to our house. And so we grew up, uh, my dad was a sharecropper, so we didn't have a lot. But we did have plenty of things to eat because we killed hogs every Thanksgiving. And we had a lot of sausage and ham and shoulder. So, Jack, how many hogs have you killed? Actually, a couple. I've, okay. d- I've done a little hog killing. Okay, I, 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 like recreationally or, you know? Yeah, for fun. <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes around shooting wild boars in Arkansas. I, I'm not much for hunting, but I will say that that helicopter hog hunting looks like a whole lot of fun to me. <laughs> but that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's cheating. <laughs> well... If they wanted it to be fair, they should give the hogs guns, but I guess <laughs> nobody's going to sign up for that one, you know. Look, God likes barbecue. That's part of the new covenant. That's, that's Bible. It's, it's, it's amazing how things have changed in the years that I've lived, and then the changes actually in Jack's world as well. Things have changed from cell phones. You've gone from... Uh, Six to twelve to fourteen. What what is yours now? Fourteen or twelve? Uh, my which phone I have? Your phone. The, the fourteen probably. <clears throat> See, my wife still wants the phone that dials. The rotary phone. Yeah. Have, have you seen the thing they put it on the internet where they hand kids a rotary phone and they ask them to dial a number, and the number of them that can't figure out what to do is you you'd be able to dial that though. 
mean, yeah, it's just like dialing a number, right? Yeah, you yeah. spin the little circle. Right, and right. Da, 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 da. It's a good impression of a rotary phone. I practiced that all night. <laughs> so, I, and James just said something, and he just kind of delivered it like it was nothing, but he talked about his, nine of the ten siblings were delivered at home. This is children, not Amazon packages. Yeah, this like, is children you know, <laughs> delivered to the house. I think it's a pretty big deal that Amazon delivers, and it was no big deal to him that the doctor delivered. I, you know, um, it's going back to home delivery. I don't know whether any of you mothers have delivered at home or not, but uh, with a midwife going back into, or a doctor coming, that's going back. Eric hasn't. That's the trend. I wouldn't want to. I, don't, I wouldn't espouse that, but I, it is the trend. So, so I mean. The, the thing that we're saying that is just patently obvious is the world has changed a lot. Amen. And so that's one of the reasons that it's tricky for us. We have this kind of gap between the generations. James grew up in a world where your doctor came to your house. <laughs> and Jack grew up in a world where you could do video visits with your doctor on your cell phone. Uh, that's, that's nuts. Uh, and, you know, there's all these scary... I, I, I bring a Bible. What did you bring? A cell phone. How many of you have a Bible? Did anybody bring a Bible today? How many of you brought cell phones? They got you beat. Changes, changes. <laughs> Jack said they voted and you lost. So, uh, uh, Jack, what do you watch for entertainment? Uh, probably, I mean, not regular television. Um, yeah. Probably like streaming services. You got Netflix, YouTube. HBO Max, that kind of stuff. James, not regular TV. Only. What do you watch? For entertainment, I watch the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> and sometimes the Green Bay Packer football team. Green Bay Packer football. And occasionally the Nebraska Cornhuskers football team. I haven't quite turned over to Tennessee yet. But if they keep winning, I might. <laughs> People don't understand how useful it is to be a bandwagon fan. And I, I would add that I watch old westerns. Anybody else? Old westerns. I actually John like. Wayne. I actually like old westerns too. You like As a young person, okay. I do like old westerns. Well, yeah. we across the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> bridge building people. This is not the bridge I expected today, but this is the bridge. <laughs> this is the bridge that I got, Jack. Um, for James's benefit, and there are other people of James's generation here. Uh, tell me what life is like as a student at Creekwood. What are the pressures? What are the struggles? Um, so I would say some of the biggest, I mean, I think one of the most obvious differences is technology. Um, like as a high school kid, there's just technology is at your fingertips. There's so much, um, basically just right there. You know, it's so accessible. You know where everybody, what everybody's doing all the time. You can reach out to them all the time. It's, there's so much exposure pretty much on all fronts. You got communication, you got social media, and all those things are great in their own light, but they're also equally as much overwhelming. Um, and I think a lot of kids can be overexposed to that, me included. I mean, it's just easy to get wrapped up in that. Um, what it's like to be a senior, I think being a senior, most, most seniors can say the same thing. Everybody's always asking you what your plan is. Where are you going to school? What's your, what do you want to do? You know what I mean? What is your life looking like? So I would say a big thing most people are trying to answer right now is, right, well, what is, what's the next phase looking like, you know? You're moving out. You're getting old, you're 18 now, at least I am. You know, I signed my first waiver yesterday for the first time. I registered to vote the other day. Like, weird stuff, adult stuff I've never really experienced before, you know? So I think um, it's, it's been a different time for me. It's, it's a transition phase, um, and I think that has been, has been very different. But I think a lot of kids, seniors right now, are doing that same thing. So let me try something a little different here. If everybody's asking you, what's next? Let's ask James. James, what's next for you? I'm thinking about registering to vote. <laughs> I think I'm old enough now. Maybe. Thank you. Thinking about that. Are you old enough to be drafted yet? Uh, no, 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 no. They don't draft them anymore. So, Tell that to Russia. Well, I'm not going over there for sure. <laughs> well, why not? But uh, what... <clears throat> What I plan for uh, the next year is survive. If I don't survive, all of you are invited to my funeral. 
we, we're going to call it a celebration of life. And we're going to sing Hallelujah Chorus while we walk down the aisle. Uh, <clears throat> as you get older, your, all your plans have materialized. And you are who you are, what you are. Um, relationships, family impo is important. I have three kids, three in-laws, and 13 grandkids. So uh, a lot of my existence now is wrapped around with uh, two things, the, uh, kids and grandkids, and walking to uh, Dixon Donuts and having a cup of coffee with Jim and Richard. That's, that's my day. And taking care of Harriet. That's, that's what I plan to do. So, I mean, you can kind of hear the difference in these stages of life just in those two answers. You know, here's this, here's this pressure. What's next? What decision are you going to make? What's this? And then, James, your pressure was a little bit different because you just talked about I've made most of my plans and I've finished most of my plans. And I know your, your answer was kind of a joke, but it wasn't a joke. Survive. Because in this era where you're providing care for Harriet and you can't do the things you wanted to do, survive is not easy. No, uh, where Jack is beginning his, I'm ending mine, but um, the, uh, the decisions that Jack is having to make about what are you going to do with your life, you got, I'm, did I tell you how old I was? Did some of so. you figure it out? They were, oh. I saw calculators come out. Okay. Oh, that means I'm old. I said you, calculators. You got phones. a calculator on your phone. Calculate that. Actually, I'll be 82 in December the 8th, a week, um, two months from now. Don't forget or he'll be sad. Don't forget. Be, be, uh, just bring cash, please. Okay. <laughs> um, I need it because the stock market keeps going down. <laughs> anyway, um, what was I going to say? I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> 81 and 18. Oh, I, I, I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's important. Somebody has to keep us in track. <laughs> it's important for us to understand uh, if we're going to bridge, Bill, we have to understand this is a tough time for young people to make decisions. There are careers out there that were not even thunk of before I, I got here. But uh, Jack has got to make those decisions, and a lot of you are making those decisions as you go along what you're going to do with your life. Uh, I remember the thing that changed my life was a little sign on a, on a uh, chalkboard in one of my Bible classes at Lipscomb. It said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. That changed the way I thought, and I did. But I would suggest that all young people live by that. Only what's done for Christ will last. That's my sermon for today. It's together we stand. Oh, no, 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 not, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Um, each of you faces different pressures. And it's, it's interesting, you know, the way some things stay the same, but other things don't. You know, James, when you were in school, there were jerks and bullies, right? There were some annoying people, and that's true for Jack. But in James's era, what did you do with a bully? I was a bully? No, no, no. In your... <laughs> Don't oh. hit me. Uh, well, what did you do when there was a bully, James? Well, if somebody annoyed me, I'd grab my shirt collar and bust his nose. That's what we did back in those days. So what and happens if you do that? He gets into NDA. Yeah. Yeah. The very, you get punished, basically. Yeah. With um, nine siblings and ten first cousins, nobody picked on us at school, okay? They just didn't do it. I remember one time they were a, a gang, actually. I remember one time on a bus, uh, some big old guy, I was like seventh, sixth grade or something, some big guy had me down on, on the seat beating up on me, and all of a sudden he went, choo, over the seat, and two of my brothers had him. He didn't do that anymore. <laughs> but those things have changed. You know, you can't, if, if I said that I'm going to bring my gun to school tomorrow, it would be reported and they'd be at my door, hopefully, and take it away from me. But I took my shotgun to school when I was in high school. Uh, I put it on the bus and I told uh, the bus driver, I said, I'll pick it up after school, I'm going hunting. 
and that was fine. In fact, people don't believe this, but as a, a junior and senior in high school, I drove a school bus. I bet you they won't let Jack drive a school bus. I can do it, they just won't let me do it. <laughs> so, so Jack, just you were listening to what James just said. How did that feel to you? I mean, I, I think it's on everyone's mind. I mean, school shooters, I mean, that's, that's literally one of the biggest focuses of, of at least my school career. It's like we touched on in first service, like the different things you're having to worry about when you go to school now versus when you went to school are so different, you know? That, that could never happen. You're a school shooter. That the situation you just described would be a very bad situation to, in today's world. You could never do that, you know? We just worried about zits. Yeah, I wish it was that simple sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the, the the world was normal with you brought your gun to school, and like just saying that in first service when James said that in first service, Jack's eyes got a little big, and I think his phrase was, "That's exactly how school shootings start now." And Jack's school has school shooter drills. Our school had fire drills. And James's school, they just handed them power drills. You know, it, it's, it, it. they hadn't invented power drills yet, had they? Oh, no, they didn't have power drills. They, they had brace and bits. Yeah. Al, you remember the old brace and bits? Mm. No, they, we didn't have drills. But that's not to say that, like, I think, James, the world you grew up in was physically harder. I mean, you were, you were a sharecropper. When you were a baby, you are five days old, and they'd stick you under a shade tree and said, eat some dirt, you know. Uh, in Jack's era, Jennifer would have said, you know, is that dirt been checked for recalls? Like, you know, or can, we, can we put some plastic around the rocks, you know? So your world in a lot of ways was physically harder. Jack's world, I don't know if it's fair to compare, but it, it feels almost emotionally harder. You know, he, you came home and you escaped those things, but thanks to that stupid smartphone, Jack doesn't ever escape those things. He's got, he's got the pressure that I never had. I picked cotton when I was four years old and made enough money to buy me a tricycle. He doesn't remember when he was four years old. But the pressures, the pressures of young people today are much more than they were when I was growing up. We had pressures, but of a different kind. He, he's worried about shooters. I, I wasn't worried about shooters. He's worried about uh, working his, keeping his uh, Facebook <laughs> from being uh, tapped into. I don't have Facebook. With a face like this, you don't need a Facebook. But anyway, the, the, the whole different area of stress is for younger people today. And in order for us to communicate, we have to really develop ourselves so that we can listen to what Jack has, has to say and that Jack can listen to what I have to say. You're about to say something, weren't you? I, I think, touching on that, the, the difference with technology is you don't, in today's world, you don't really escape from it. You go home from school, yeah, sure, you're not, you're not a, at school, right? But you can still talk to anybody you want, whenever you want, for however long you want. You can know what everybody's doing, what's going on, all that stuff. And yeah, that's great. It has plenty of benefits. It's like when you're traveling far away, it's nice to be able to call your family and see how things are going or, you know, having the internet at your fingertips to figure out what things are wrong. Um, but it's funny, earlier this week, I broke my phone and I was without my phone for a couple of days and Oh, the humanity! Yeah. And so I would, you know, I went and rode my bike a little bit and just was like, all right, I'll be back here whenever. And it was a nice refresh to not be so consumed by something that we don't realize how consumed we are by sometimes. Um, it's nice to be able to, to disconnect from that. And I think that's the, that's the bigger struggle with today is you don't have that much opportunities to disconnect if you don't make that time, you know. We get pretty dependent, even us old people get pretty dependent on technology. Computers, cell phones. Ventilators. Um, ventilators. 
ventilators, uh, uh, breathing machines, um, CPACs, <laughs> and all those. We get, we get pretty dependent on that, but I am, uh, I am intimidated by technology. Jack probably is not intimidated by technology. I mean, my school is online. I mean, you can, this is over the past couple of years, but I can, I can go to school online. I don't even have to be at school if I don't want to, you know? It's crazy. That's weird. <laughs> you don't have to be at school to be at school. That's, that's the way, uh, that's, that's, that's the, the necessity for us to understand what's going on in, with different generations. That's why Matthew chose to do this today, so we can develop some more understanding of, of different generational problems and difficulties. Yeah, we need to be able to understand where these gaps are because, you know, there's, there's just always this stuff, you know, even the days of Plato, there were the complaints from the older people that they didn't like the young people's music. You know, some things never change. Uh, and you don't escape some of this stuff. But what I hope you guys actually heard was a pretty honest reaction, both from Jack and James. There's some of James's world that Jack looks at and goes, that's weird. And there's some of James's, the other direction, that, that's weird. I mean, Jack, we talked in first service a little bit about uh, flying, the act of flying. And, you know, you have never flown in the world without airport security being insane. You know, uh, I, I remember in the afternoons, on Sunday afternoons, sometimes we'd go to the airport just to watch the planes take off and land. I feel like if you do that now, you end up on a registry. You know, James took his gun to school. You do that now, you don't end up in a registry, you end up dead. Um, Lots happened after 9-11. A lot of things, a lot of things changed. You know, and you think about it, I wasn't even alive for 9-11. It's crazy. I mean, there, there's just so much that's so different that I've grown up that is my normal, that is for you. You've lived through how, however many different versions of that normal. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the bridges that we have to cross for religious purposes, for political purposes, uh, you may be getting into this, <clears throat> When 9-11 happened, I was in Suva, Fiji, Fijian Islands, okay? And I was, I was conducting some seminars throughout the Fijian Islands, and I went into a flea market in Suva on the day after 9-11, and uh, one of my students was running a booth there, and she said, <clears throat> she said, you see that guy right over there? I said, yeah. He's afraid of you. He's afraid you're going to do something to him. And I said, why is that? He's Muslim. Right after 9-11, we didn't like those people, did we? But he didn't do it, and I didn't get hurt by it. So I went over and I said, I'm James Hinkle. I'm a Christian, and I understand that you're a Muslim. I want you to know that I love you anyway, and I don't blame you for anything that happened. You cross a bridge. If you're not afraid to cross a bridge, you're better off. I don't get along real well with Jack, okay? I don't know his girlfriends. And I said friends. He's probably got six or seven. But I don't Mom, know. Mom, you, you, you need to throw something in here? Mom just had a heart attack, James. I don't know what kind of grades he makes in high school. Uh, I don't know, I don't even know what kind of car he drives or what kind of bicycle he rides or what, I don't know a lot about Jack, okay? But I do know that Jack comes to church and he's probably brought more teenagers than anybody else in this church in the last year. That I know about Jack and that I appreciate about Jack. Hey, his sister's in the running for that title too, by the way. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, she's doing a good job too. So we talked about these bridges. The reason we're starting here is, I know James and I know Jack, these are my friends. And this gap is not that big. I mean, it's, it's a gap, but it's not an insurmountable gap. So I kind of want us to use this to practice for how we deal with some of the other gaps. Jack, what do you wish that 
our senior members knew about you? What, do you, what, what would you like from them? How can they help you? What do you wish you had there? So I think going back, touching on like the fact that we're not at odds with each other and we're in the ability to have a conversation makes a big difference. But because you're not always going to be in a situation where you're talking with people that are willing to listen to each other and talk about it. But I, I think as a young person, just as much, just as much as we can be stubborn, like it, it goes both ways. You know what I mean? It's about willingness to being able to hear each other out. It's like I'm moving into a whole new phase of my life that I'm going to need help with. Like I'm going to need advice about, all right, well, how, how do I make this decision? How do I, what decisions do I make? Do I not make? I need wisdom from people that have lived that and experienced that. And as a young, young people need to be more open to, to hearing those things. You know what I mean? Because I think we're easy as quickly to dismiss people and dismiss you guys. Like, oh, they're, they're old, whatever. I, I, we can figure it out. You know? And it's just, that's just not the case. You know, we need to be able to listen to each other. You know, we have to be careful as a church because we put the young people over there in the youth building, and we put the old people over here. We need a lot more transgenerational activities so that we can interact, share. I need to. I need to learn what kind of car he drives because. I want to see it if it's parked at a tavern or something. But anyway, <laughs> but you see, but you see, James drives a Nissan, by the way. But it, uh, we, as a church, could do more transgenerational, and I, I hope that maybe we can plan some activities because if if we keep the youth over there and we keep us older people over here then there is not a chance for us to get to know each other like we ought to get to know each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we as a church have always, ever since I've been here at least, we've always honored our young people. We, they participate in our worship. They, they're full members of this church. Their voice is just as good as my voice. So we try to do that, but we could do better. The biggest room in anybody's house is the room for improvement very good, very good. And james you know it's not just this building or that building to be very honest you know it's a time thing because on wednesdays most of our seniors come to the 10 30 class because they don't want to drive at night and i appreciate that and if i'm on the roads at night and you don't need to be driving at night i don't want you to drive at night either because i like being alive um, jackson school at 10 30. so y'all are never going to see each other on wednesday and so, you know, what's tricky about all of these things is it requires some give and take and some, you know, it's hard to get hold of Jack on a Saturday because Jack has cross country meets and Jack has homecoming and Jack has all of this stuff. It's hard for Jack to sacrifice to come. And so finding a time and a place, it takes intentional effort to build a bridge. It does not ever happen accidentally. We have to do this stuff on purpose or it will not happen. A couple of things that have contributed to the transgenerational activities was the family camp mm -hmm. that we just did. Um, I'm slowing down, so I'm not uh, I'm not as active as I once was in interacting with our young people. But but a, a lot of you are intentionally interacting with our young people, and we applaud that and pray that uh, they'll continue to happen and even happen more. But we plan some transgenerational activities like the family camp, and we, can, we should, I, I remember, uh, I would, and Matthew does a good job of this, he probably goes to some of the cross country stuff, some of the bowling stuff, some of the basketball, some of the football. Not basketball, I don't like basketball. Not, not he, he stays away from basketball. But anyway, the, there's too much noise in the gym for him in the basketball game. Anyway, that is, um, if, if uh, some of us older people would uh, attend some of the events, if they're in the band, let's go see the band. Let's go and listen to that. All of those can contribute to crossing the bridge. And so James, having, what, having what do you want Jack to, to go to? Like the funerals, uh, or? <laughs> well, 
occasionally, what? occasionally we have uh, some of our young people to meet us at Dixon Donuts for a donut. I like donuts. They don't like coffee. Yeah, some of them. Do you like coffee? Oh, I, I'll drink some coffee. Well, some people like coffee. Well, me, we meet that at, nine, at eight o'clock every morning. Okay. <laughs> but you can, you can coffee meet. Donuts. Wait, you'll make that happen. Yeah. We, we can do that. What day are you going to do it? I got all week. They're close on Mondays, yeah, right? I got all week. Well, we'll be at Dixon Donuts that are open on Monday. So don't go to Dixon Donuts on Monday, but on t- Tuesday, we'll be there at 8 o'clock. And most, at 8? most other kids in Dixon County are off this week, too. What? So we can, I mean, we could have a, we could have a throwdown at Dixon Donuts. Good. Yeah. Good. We could have a lot of old folk and a lot of young folk. All right. Bring your, bring so did your, we just make a date? Did this just happen bring Tuesday? Yourself, bring yourself on and we'll play a little music. And, and, you know, one of the things that is tricky is, okay, there are some logistical things that make this hard, times of day, uh, schedules, all, all of that stuff. There's the interest. Um, your preferences and my preferences. I would much rather have lunch with you or bring you to my house for dinner than I would get up and drive to Dixon Donuts. That's, that's, Dixon Donuts is Matthew's preference. If God wanted Matthew to eat donuts on a regular basis, he would bring a Krispy Kreme to Dixon. Uh, and you go when the hot light's on because that's what led the children of Israel across the Red Sea. Uh, but my preference isn't the most important thing in the world. I need to get up and go to donuts with you sometime, you know? A problem is the s- schedules run parallel, not perpendicular. So, uh, like on Mondays, we go to Speedy's and have coffee. It's cheaper there. <laughs> so, uh, but we have a, uh, old people have a schedule, and then Jack has his schedule, so they don't meet too much. I think you have to be, as Matthew said earlier, more intentional with that type of stuff. You definitely have to make time. It, it goes for both. And I mean, equally as much as you have a schedule, as a young person, there's so much changing and going on in our life that we have to be able to stop and slow down too and make, make time. It's just like I've grown up with two great sets of grandparents. So I've grown up around people, you know, older folk that have been examples in my life. Um, and you have to make time. I'm blessed to have a set that live across the street, so that helps. But it, it, I've realized there's so, much to, there's so much to learn. There's so much to take from both ways, you know what I mean? And that time is, is irreplaceable. Um. If you're a, a grandson or a granddaughter, make time for your grandparents, okay? Just do it. Uh, it. It just makes a whole lot of difference in your life. As Jack said, you, you interact with older parents, grandparents, changes a lot of thinking in your own life. So do that. Let me encourage that. And if you're a grandpa, go see your grandkids. And uh, Jim and Cindy uh, learned to change diapers again, okay, with their new grandson. Jim just said no. (laughs) And Cindy just hit him real hard. Y'all see that? He's going to have bruises on his ribs from that elbow. It was on video and everything, Cindy. You're going to jail. Well, James, Jack, thank you. Um, And I hope that you heard what they said today. This stuff ain't rocket surgery. It's just a question of are we going to be willing to do it? Um, Are we going to be willing to listen to each other and not judge each other? And we're starting here because Jack and James have a lot in common too. They share a faith, they share friends, they share family, a lot of good things. Building bridges isn't that hard here, but we don't do great at it, honestly. It's going to get harder when we start talking about people who disagree with us religiously or politically or people who sin in a different way than I'm comfortable sinning. Um, So we're going to have to talk about that in the next few weeks, but I'm so grateful for these guys and what they've shared with us. If you would, let me pray. Father, thank you for my friends up here. Thank you for James and the years of wisdom that he represents and for the way that uh, he has helped me and guided me and mentored me. Thank you for the way he's taking care of Harriet, and I pray that you bless those two. I pray that you give James the strength that he needs for this journey, uh, the patience, all of the things that are so hard right now. Father, I pray that you bless Jack. Um, Bless him in this time of transition. Everybody asks him what's next, Lord. I pray that you give him answers to that question. I pray that you help him as he says goodbye to his high school era and says hello to something new. I pray that you help him uh, cling close to you in this transition, that you 
you protect him, that you strengthen him, that you give him your wisdom. Thank you for these men. Thank you for my friends. And thank you for the way they bridge a gap today. In Christ we pray. Amen. I thought to end we'd have Jack and James have a foot race. Uh, I was thinking something easy, maybe like 25 or 30 miles. Okay, uh, so we're going to give James a head start. Do you think you can beat him to the door? I think you can still beat him to the door. I still think you can beat him to the door. I still think you can beat him to the door. If you didn't hear anything else, the one thing that James and Jack absolutely do have in common, and that they have in common with every single person in this room, is that they have a need for Christ. We all need him. The reason we're in this bridge building business is because, well, he built that first bridge. So this morning, uh, as we stand, as we sing, I want you to think about the need you have, and if there's something that someone in this church can do to help you meet that need, let's stand and sing together. Lord, I come, I Heavenly Father, we thank you for thy mercy, for thy kindness and thy patience. We thank you for the abundance that you have given to us and for the peace that we enjoy. We pray for those that are suffering in lands that, that they are oppressed, that are unable to stand before you without fear of their neighbors. And we pray that you would remove those from power who would continually pressed down upon your people. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us guidance and love. We thank you that this same Jesus can reach to each generation, that we all have the same access through thy son, Jesus. We pray that we might truly look to him for our guidance in all our days. 
for you have the number of our days. Help us to understand that we are your servants. Help us to love one another and to reach out to this community to show that love. In Christ's name we pray.